currently the Earth system, the Earth climate system, is driven by parameters which are outside of their historical bounds for the over last millions or couple of millions of years. Um, you know, people concentrate uh, on CO2, on PPMs of CO2 in the atmosphere as, uh, you know, as the only magical um, index of what's going to happen to us. But my, I'll, I'll tell you what is my personal thinking of, about this. We have, it's not we, the earth, because we don't know how much of it is human, how much of it is uh, all other factors combined. But a climate change has started. It's a climate transition. A dynamic climate transition cannot be stopped uh, only because, you know, we change one parameter, because there are multiple and unforeseen positive feedbacks amplifying that parameter, and these other positive feedbacks may already be out of hand. And so, again, it is very naive to think that, uh, you know, somehow if we stop uh, CO2 concentration at 400 ppm, everything else will be honky-dory. It will not be, and people need to realize it that a climate change, once, once it gets started, you know, of the Earth system, the global system, cannot be stopped for about 80,000 to 100,000 years. And so for us, it's an infinite time. And so there are hopes that if we stabilize CO2 concentration at 400 ppm, the climate will kind of revert back to the old pattern. But you know, as scientists, we know that all systems driving, all parameters driving this climate system are out of their historical bounds by a lot, and we don't know where this climate system is going, okay? So this is actually far more pessimistic than just saying, oh, 400 ppms uh, of CO2 are, are going to kill us. What I'm saying is, yes, we may have 400, 380, but it may or may not stop the ongoing climate change. Getting, uh, you know, getting this very unpleasant and very complicated message to ordinary people is next to impossible. I, you know, I have very low expectations. Now, can we, have I influenced my direct environment, my family? Yes, I have. Uh, and have I succeeded in teaching them a few? Yes, but that's very limited. So. What we need to do is have teachers and, 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 you know, and, and, and local leaders who do it in most every community. Uh, along the Gulf Coast, we have built an immense refining capacity, both in Texas and Louisiana. So essentially, we have very large refineries which need to be fed with crude oil to produce crude oil products, gasoline, diesel fuel, jet fuel, lubricants, what have you. And because uh, the consumption of petroleum in the United States has declined uh, for a variety of reasons, one of them being an, a, a deep recession, another one is that people actually are slowly beginning to pay attention to what they drive and how they drive. Um, the, the U.S. consumption is now less than the refining capacity of the U.S. refineries. So, the purpose of the Keystone Pipeline is, in fact, uh, get the crude oil to the refineries so that they can uh, produce products, and then some of these products will be exported. And it also provides these refineries with a more stable and perhaps um, safer, you know, from a commercial point of view, the supply of crude oil. So that, that's the driving force for the, for the pipeline. Now, obviously, uh, you know, there are disagreements as to where the pipeline should go, what uh, rivers or aquifers should it cross or not. And I think the pipeline route will be adjusted. Uh, but I think that the pipeline will happen. And in the big scheme of things, you know, if, if you look at the, at the global scheme of things, is it really doesn't matter if it will happen here or it will go to China. So it will happen. And that's because you have seven and a half billion people and counting uh, trying to drive more cars and um, 
that's the truth, however we want to view it from, from our own individual points of view. I think that it's exceedingly difficult to convey such complex uh, messages uh, with such dire, potentially dire consequences to people who are trying to make ends meet every week, every month, are struggling, are busy, are distracted, and watch too much TV. Okay? And so, so in, in, in the system of, I call them lethal distractions by small things, irrelevant things, celebrities, which are less than ir irrelevant, uh, um, we don't have time or bandwidth to actually concentrate on what really matters. And, and sometimes I suspect that we build an entire system to do just that, to prevent us from thinking uh, about what really matters. We're not going to run uh, out, out of oil uh, for, you know, forever. What we're going to run out of is the rate of producing that oil uh, at the level that is commensurate with our current consumption. And our current consumption has to go down, uh, in, not only in oil, but uh, you know, in far more damaging coal um, and, and everything else. So our larger responsibility is to consume uh, less uh, uh, fossil energy, and in particular, less crude oil. Uh, and and you know, I'll give you a different argument. Not because crude oil is so bad, because it isn't. It is the blood of our society. And there are good arguments to make that uh, these complex societies that we see today could not have happened without crude oil and will cease to exist without crude oil. So setting that aside, um, if you want to continue in this society for, for some time longer, it would behoove you to use less of it uh, because then uh, your children may be able to use also some of it. Uh, and your grandchildren and grand grandchildren, and so people need to realize that this is a finite resource, and then and then using it in the crazy irresponsible ways we are using it today, is in fact suicidal, and and it's suicidal within one generation. So to those who actually have children and care about them, uh, I would say, well, if you don't use less, well then your children are going to suffer disproportionately. And your and grandchildren for sure. So take your picks whether you want to drive your um, lonely booty in a one F one fifty to work, or you want to use a smaller car, or even oh God forbid, insist that your local politicians will put a, a light rail line to to for you to commute. You know, um, so so right now, as I look and talk to people and see what's happening around me, the driving force for changing our habits is in fact not very large. Uh, and if anything, it's declining because people are preoccupied with the signs of recovery and then with the increasing stock market. At some point, we have to admit that we will not be able to solve our problems. Okay? And, and therefore, uh, there will be a reset you know, you know, it's a push a button, and and the society will be reset in many of its values and 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 actions, and then we're going to start afresh. And also, please remember that the planet Earth will survive us just fine. Okay, it's the planet Earth is far more powerful and far more resilient and anti-fragile than uh, human civilization today. And so we're not going to bring the planet down with us. The planet will, you know, it will take it a hundred thousand, a million years to recover. It will, only without us.